The previous episode mentioned that Murphy was living a life of ease after leaving Squad X, now hiding in a strip club with a group of zombies. This comfortable life was wonderful. Notably, Cassandra had become quite peculiar, seemingly treating Murphy as her master. You like what I picked up for you? Yes. Cassandra didn't shy away from Murphy's physical touches. Instead, she seemed to anticipate and enjoy them. <laughs> Don't be afraid, he won't bite. And even if he did, you're immune, remember? I'm not a zombie. However, what Murphy didn't know was that survivors outside were frantically searching for him, all for the government's hefty reward. Squad X was also looking for Murphy. Knowing him well, they figured he would likely be hiding in such disreputable places. Indeed, their guess was correct. Murphy was inside. When the door opened and he saw his old friends, Murphy wasn't surprised but greeted them calmly. Hey guys. What the hell took you so long? Murphy, you son of a Yeah, what she said. Now, now, Roberta. Roberta, quite angry, charged at him and pinned him against a cabinet. The surrounding zombies immediately became restless. Roberta's anger stemmed from Murphy's actions at the lab, which nearly killed them and led to countless survivors dying in the nuclear explosion. Yet, Murphy appeared so nonchalant. Murphy, unfazed, believed that in a post-apocalyptic world, there was no need to apologize for anything. The culprit should be that Dr. Kurian. Moreover, his status is very noble and he can be said to be the savior of mankind. If he dies, the world will be completely hopeless. His shameless remarks were met with scorn. 10K even tried to tie Murphy up, but Cassandra was the first one to rush out and stand in front of him. Clearly, Cassandra no longer recognized them. What did you do to her? Saved her life. What did you do? Roberta interrupts them and says, Murphy, stop it. There are bounty hunters out there. We need to get you to California. Murphy was evasive, having no desire to go to California after his lab experience. Saving humanity had nothing to do with him. Changing the subject, Murphy urged them to enjoy the show he had prepared as a form of entertainment in this apocalyptic world. He then went to make preparations. Cassandra ran to the backyard to start the diesel generator. Lights came on the stage in the house. Murphy walked up, smugly delivering an opening speech, promising an exciting show. As the music started, to the disbelief of Doc and the others, a zombie in seductive clothing walked onto the stage. The female zombie held onto a pole with one hand and began spinning with her eyes closed. They were shocked. Was this a pole dance performance? Only 10K seemed somewhat excited. Well, I hope she ain't working for tips. But as time passed, the zombie did nothing but spin faster and faster, accelerating her rotations. Roberta and the others looked at Murphy like he was a fool. Suddenly, applause came from the doorway and a burly man walked in. Vasquez took out his submachine gun and warned Squad X not to get any funny ideas, declaring Murphy his prey. Murphy was annoyed, resenting being treated like an easily manipulated person. Hit it! As the music played, the sleeping zombies around them woke up, and smoke filled the stage. Vasquez seemed no ordinary man. He remained calm, precisely shooting each zombie in the head. The zombies also attacked Roberta and her team, forcing them to fight back with their weapons. As they battled, Murphy and Cassandra had already run to the door, with Vasquez following them with his gun. Roberta followed too. She didn't want Murphy to escape or the man to succeed. As Roberta turned around, a zombie pounced on her, knocking her gun to the ground. Roberta was lifted into the air by the zombie. Addie and the others arrived but were helpless as their bullets were depleted. 10K quickly grabbed a fire extinguisher from the wall. Everyone thought he'd use it as a weapon, but 10K plunged it into the zombie's body. The others showed peculiar expressions. Thus, the zombie's flesh and blood mixed with the dry powder splattered all over Squad X, who could only suppress their disgust. Their priority was finding Murphy. Their first task upon getting out was to reload their weapons. Next, there might be a fierce battle. As everyone will be vying for Murphy, a car sped past them on the left, clearly on Murphy's trail. Meanwhile, Murphy and Cassandra fled eastward, pursued by the man. Squad X followed the car's direction and also spotted them, thus began a chase game on the streets. As Murphy turned a corner, 
A black MPV blocked his path, with fully armed, masked people inside. Suddenly, Vasquez decisively opened fire. The others were confused. Unsure if Vasquez had a feud with them, the group in the MPV couldn't even retaliate before being taken out by Vasquez. Murphy takes this opportunity to slip away. Vasquez doesn't seem to care and goes up and fires two more shots before going after them. Squad X realized that with more bounty hunters arriving, they had to be ruthless to survive. To confirm their thoughts, an off-road vehicle rushed over upon hearing the gunfire. Not only that, but a car drove up behind them, the same woman they had seen earlier who was also a bounty hunter working alone. Squad X was speechless, realizing Murphy's allure far exceeded their expectations. TK Murphy! This was not the worst of it. The people Vasquez had killed also turned into zombies. Roberta made a quick decision to lead them in a risky escape. Unexpectedly, someone from the MPV was still alive. Seemingly the leader, he calmly stepped out of the vehicle, shouldering a rocket launcher, Fortunately, Squad X ran fast, or they would have been turned to ash. The man acted with ease, like a boss, probably mistaking Roberta and her group as Vasquez's allies. The town was now in complete chaos. Besides the three groups already mentioned, many other bounty hunters roamed, hoping to find Murphy for a hefty reward. A pickup truck unloaded five or six uniformed men, all armed, seeming like a well-trained organization. The leader, a middle-aged man named Zane, looked cruel and brutal. He ordered his men to break Murphy's legs upon sight, then bind and deliver him. Anyone who dared to hoard Murphy for themselves would face death, no matter where they hid. If they encountered other bounty hunters, there was only one principle to follow. Brothers, let's go hunting! In the center of this whirlwind, Murphy finally realized the gravity of the situation. He felt like a lamb among wolves, needing to escape quickly, but before Murphy could get far, Vasquez charged out from the side of a house. Before Vasquez could use his taser, Murphy fled towards the side of the house. During his escape, Murphy faced a troubling issue. He didn't want to attract attention, yet zombies he encountered on the road started following him. This large group made it even easier to expose him. However, there was a silver lining. These zombies were not friendly to others, but for Vasquez, an experienced fighter, dealing with zombies was just a matter of time. Murphy used this opportunity to flee to the town center. To his dismay, it was even more chaotic, filled with gunfire. Some bounty hunters, not even knowing what Murphy looked like, started fighting each other. A zombie noticed Murphy and happily ran towards him. A car stopped with a gunshot. Murphy, thinking few knew his identity, boldly walked out and even asked for a lift. But Murphy was too naive. The woman raised her gun. The woman had recognized Murphy earlier and followed him in her car. The shot she fired was a blank, only causing discomfort. Now, Murphy was within her grasp, but she didn't notice a figure charging at her from behind. Cassandra, Cassandra, like a zombie, bit into the woman's neck. Murphy finally recovered and slowly stood up. Surprised by Cassandra's transformation, Murphy was about to drive off when a figure came out of the side and knocked him down. 10K was furious with Murphy for all the trouble he caused about to restrain him, but suddenly... A blast stunned 10K, leaving him disoriented and deaf. A scorpion, intending to fire again, was attacked by several zombies and had to flee. Murphy seized this opportunity, calling Cassandra to escape quickly. Cassandra hesitated, staring blankly at 10K lying on the ground. Their relationship was good before the nuclear explosion, but sadly, Cassandra didn't seem to remember anything. She turned and ran towards Murphy. 10K was momentarily unconscious. After an unknown period, when he could finally see clearly again, there were zombie corpses beside him, but he couldn't hear anything at all. Obviously having become deaf, he saw the woman turned into a zombie and more bounty hunters fighting each other. Suddenly, strong hands grabbed his shoulders. It was Squad X. They had just arrived and were immediately attacked by several groups. With Mac and the others cover, Doc managed to pull 10k back. These people are completely insane. Some for government rewards, some private mercenaries. After all, 
Murphy's blood is very precious. Roberta realized staying put was not an option, they were just targets here. She volunteered to cover while the others split into pairs to find Murphy, determined not to let anyone else get to him first. Bounty hunters! Kill them too! And my car will cover you. One, go! Roberta provided cover fire, allowing Doc and 10K to escape the area. Mac and Addy then also rushed into the alley, now alone behind cover. Roberta closed her eyes, took a deep breath, and tried to calm herself. Ten seconds later she opened her eyes, whether she could break out or not was up to her. On the other hand, Murphy and Cassandra were still running, attracting a large number of zombies behind them, making them an easy target. He decided to hide in a nearby dormitory building, waiting for the storm to pass. Reaching the upper floors, he finally relaxed, hoping those people wouldn't find this place. Suddenly, he noticed a zombie at the edge that looked surprisingly like him, even with similar hair. But Murphy couldn't imagine that his location was still exposed. As Mac and Addy ran onto the street, zombies kept chasing them. They initially shot a few zombies but soon realized that the zombies' target seemed to be the dormitory. Likely attracted by Murphy, they entered the building too. The ground floor was quiet with no zombies in sight, but they remained cautious for their safety. Suddenly, sounds came from the hallway behind them, forcing them to hide in the corridor. Soon, two bounty hunters followed, indicating they weren't the only ones after Murphy. Meanwhile, at a nearby gas station, Vasquez arrived and waited behind a car, seemingly for something. Just then a figure creeps up behind him. It's Roberta. As she aimed her gun, Vasquez suddenly ducked back. Vasquez had been waiting just for Murphy. Seeing them enter the gas station's convenience store, he quickly followed. This was his only chance. He tried to control his steps, fearing to startle them. Ready. He drew his security baton from his waist. After all, Murphy was more valuable alive. But as he entered, he found Murphy standing motionless in the middle of the room. A perfect moment for a surprise attack. Vasquez was baffled what was happening. The real threat, however, was the hidden Cassandra, poised to snap Vasquez's neck. But Vasquez, seasoned in combat, didn't give Cassandra the chance, instead throwing her to the ground. Now, Cassandra was like a wild beast, violent and crazy. Vasquez can only fight it off. He hastily pulled out a taser from his pocket, but misjudged again. Cassandra had already adapted to such devices, only becoming more aggressive. Vasquez couldn't bother to check if Cassandra was dead. He just scurried out of the gas station. This was more troublesome than zombies outside. Roberta, about to enter, was also stunned. Why did this guy run out so soon after entering? And why was Cassandra chasing him? Where's Murphy? As Roberta pondered, a man suddenly started shooting at her. Wes was a little pissed off that he hadn't killed that fucking woman. Suddenly, he realized he foolishly hid behind a diesel tank, breaking out in a cold sweat. Wes didn't bother confronting Roberta and quickly ran towards the dormitory building in the distance. Only when he felt safe did Wes breathe a sigh of relief, shaken by his earlier stupidity. But coincidentally, as he reached the corridor entrance, he spotted a figure, it was Murphy. Hey! Wait a minute! I got him! Murphy was even more frustrated. He'd managed to lure some people away with his double, but he'd been found out again. He jogged up the stairs and finally hid in a room. Wes followed to the same floor. Wes says he won't hurt Murphy, but he's already got his hammer out. I ain't gonna hurt you, brother. Their boss had said the first thing to do upon catching Murphy was to break his legs. Hey, yo, guys! He's in here! Wes was just probing, not sure if Murphy was really inside. Murphy, anxiously hiding in the closet, dared not make a sound, sensing the man had discovered him. Fortunately, voices outside the window momentarily distracted Wes. Below were Doc and 10K, who had followed the zombies here, guessing they were attracted by Murphy, but as soon as they arrived, they were attacked. Doc, frustrated, complained. Aren't we supposed to be saving the world? Why do we have to fight each other? Doc grumbled a few words, ready to cover 10k as they dashed to the back door, but another shot hit the front of the car just as they made their move, and the two of them were too pinned down to make a move. Ah! 
10K. Looking through the broken glass, spotted the man's location on the second floor. Seventh room. Seventh window from the right. You think you could take him out? The arrival of zombies distracted Wes. Doc, in the meantime, stumbled to the back door. Armed with a pistol, Doc quietly crept upstairs, ready to take down the man. 10K cooperated, signaling Doc's position while keeping an eye on Wes's window. Doc, seeing the barrel of the gun, was nervous. Direct confrontation wasn't his style. He could only pray for success. After praying, he quietly slipped into the room, planning a surprise attack from behind. At the door, Doc took three deep breaths. Praying again for divine protection. Damn it! It was awkward when the ambush failed. Doc had no choice but to rush at Wes, preventing him from shooting. But after all, Doc is old and not as strong or as skilled as Wes. You want some of this? Feeling cowardly but trapped, Doc knew that in a narrow path, the brave wins. They circled each other warily. Doc is a veteran, after all, and he deliberately waits for Wes to strike first. Then a dodging smash to Wes's head is followed by Doc pouncing again. But Doc was too old. His two fierce punches were like mere tickles to Wes. Wes seized the opportunity to counterattack, kicking Doc away and pinning him down, choking his neck. <laughs> Doc felt it was getting harder and harder to breathe. I'm afraid I'm going to die here today. Meanwhile, Murphy, hidden in the closet, surely saw everything but chose not to help. When Doc regained consciousness, he felt no more constriction around his neck. But bizarrely, he found himself floating in midair. It turned out people really do have souls. 